Okay, this is Spellbinder. Good day. Good afternoon. I'm doing an article today from Red Ice Creations, a beacon of sanity from the Northern Europe. Uh, very good if you want to get informed. The radio show is real good on this. I'm going to talk today about Andrew's Brehring Brevavich plan of increased polarization by Brit D. And this is how it goes. As you can see, he was a Mason. You can see all this. Now to the article. The trial of Norwegian mass murderer Andre Bernin Vajravich has today entered its second week with many interesting but cheering details having been revealed about the bombing in Oslo and subsequent shootings in the Isle of York you're, uh, perhaps most interesting of all is Verzevitz has provided a clear explanation of exactly what he hoped to achieve through his acts of terrorism. Immediately after the attacks, some commentators speculated that the tragedy would be exploited by the political elite to demonstrate moderate nationalist patriots who reject mass immigration and the erosion of natural culture and to strife the debates on such issues. It this, it seems, is exactly what Berlevich hoped for. During the third day of his trial, the Guardian reported how Berlevich insisted that his goal, in short to medium term, was to make paras, or pariahs of Europe's nationalists. See, he was going to demonize patriots, and he used the document 2083 to demonize patriots the very people with whom you might expect him to feel kinship. I thought I had to provoke a witch hunt of modern, moderately conservative nationalists, he said. Then he claimed that this curious strategy had already borne fruit, citing the example of Norway's Prime Minister, Jean Stoltenberg, who he said had given a speech since the attack saying that critics of immigration were wrong. The effects of this witch hunt, he said Redivit, would be to increase censorship of moderately nationalist views, which would increase polarization. The effect of this, he said, would eventually lead to a more radicalization as more will lose hope and lose faith in democracy. See, he was demonizing freedom. Ultimately, he said, these new radicals would joined the war he had started to protect the indigenous people of Norway and Western Europe. Whilst Jean Slotenberg's speech may give the impression that Vredivit's strategy is indeed going to plan, other evidence suggests that the nationalist parties and policies have not suffered at all in the wake of the Norwegian terror attacks. Last week, Gert Wilder's feverly anti-Islam Freedom Party, the third largest party in the Netherlands, brought down the Dutch coalition government after withdrawing its support for EU-imposed budget cuts in France. Marine Le Pen's equally strongly anti-Islam National Front won a record 18% of the vote in the first round of the presidential elections. Therefore, Pen claims to be fighting the Is Islamization of France a position for which there is evidently considerable support, particularly in the aftermath of the Mohammed Miraz al Qaeda shooting of Talus last month. The fact that Mira was likely an asset being handled by the French authorities, of course, being rarely mentioned. Indeed, the far right appears to be in the ascendancy and even courted by the mainstream. French President Nicolas Sarkozy, knowingly that he will have to attack National Front votes if he stands any chance of re-election, said after the first round that the NF voters must be respected as to their votes were a vote of suffering, a crisis vote. Comments br bluntly critical of Islam, previously the preserved of the far right, have also been made by leading mainstream politicians in other European countries. Last week, the leader of Angela 
Merkel's Christian Dom Democrats in Parliament. Volker Kudar described Islam as not part of our tradition and identity in Germany and so does not belong in Germany, though he was careful to add, but Muslims do belong in Germany. As state citizens, of course, they enjoy their full rights. Ralph Vredovich the purported plan to spark a demon, a demon, or is it a demonization of nationalists does not appear to be working, or even necessary. His attacks are certainly feeding into the general tensions currently building between those of different political parties and faiths. Society is indeed becoming polarized. This may be the natural result of a failed experiment in multiculturalism. The effects of deliberate conspiracy conspiracies echoing those such as Operation Gladio or the strategy of tension or a combination of the two. No matter who or what is behind the current ratcheting up of tension, a political, religious, and radical tensions inextinguishably inex um, linked to the collapsing economies and deteriorating living standards of Europe, the ultimate beneficiaries are clear. The shadowy criminal elite who profit from such systematic destabilization and who Peter Dale Scott characterizes as the overworld. A new term for new world order? The overworld. Interesting. It must be pointed out that Zionist supporters of Israel are the one of the beneficiaries of the tensions currently being played out in Europe. Indeed, the newfound alliance between staunchy pro-Israeli Zionists and the ultra-national anti-Islamists is one of the most intriguing aspects of today's political scene. The extreme right has traditionally been seen, often with good cause, as anti-Semitic, and yet now we see many examples of the of the anti-Islamic far-right openly embracing Zionism and Zionist. See, that it worked perfectly for the, the Zionist. The Zionists are benefiting everything. Ender Berezovic was himself an avowed Zionist. See, his 1515-page, you know, 1,515-page manifesto containing multiple references to his firm belief that Israel is an ally which must be strongly defended by nationalists at all costs. Berejavit was also, of course, an avid follower of such any Islamic pro-Zionist writers as the American blogger Pamela Giller. The Dutch politician Gert Browders mentioned earlier is also a staunch supporter of Israel, having reportedly lived in the country for two years during his youth and visited 40 times in the last 25 years. His Freedom Party allegedly receives financing from supporters of Israel in the U.S. and the English Defense League, to whom some have linked Verdefitz openly stated that supported of Israel sometimes appearing at demonstrations waving the Star of David flag. The EDL has a Jewish division ran by the Zionist Roberta Moore, who recently expressed her support for Verejevich's murders and claimed that his teenage victims were not innocent. Really? In France, Le Pen's National Front has also reportedly won support recently from a previously hostile Jewish community. We are obviously living in dangerous times, and with the economy collapsing, widespread social tensions increasing, particular alliance forming, and the Muslims seemingly being scapegoated in a row previously allocated to Jews, drawing uh, parallels between today's political climate and that of the 1930s is unfortunately unavoidable. Listen to a very interesting program from the resistant radio.com Andrew Verjevitz a 21st century strategy of tensions with Brett D and Tom Secker linked to MP3 
This article first appeared at the Resistance Radio. Brett D. runs an independent online radio station called Resistance Radio, which broadcasts daily news, views, and, and, and analyzes challenging the lies of our corrupt political and financial leaders and the controlled corporate media. And there's a link to that. And this was a source at Activist Post. But as you can see, he was trying to take away patriots, demonize them, and look what he is, a full-fledged mason. This should tell you something. It should tell you a lot. This picture speaks volumes. Well, that's all I have to say. Until next time, this is Spellbinder saying, be good or be good at it, and do your homework on this. Find out the truth. Don't let the media tell you the truth. Find the truth on your own. Good day.